So you may see your Chame Kwame and you're thinking, wow, he looks fine, he looks fly, he's well composed, he has his act on, he's able to shine everywhere he goes, and he, he wows the crowd, he speaks so well and fine, but he has a, a manager, he has a powerhouse, you know, so you can decide to pull the plug and he will not shine anymore. I give you Mrs. Anika Insia Apao, that's our special guest for today. Welcome, oh, Anika, how are you doing? You. <laughs> Good to, good to have you. Thank you. Great to be here. I see. And we love this. Thank you, you, love you so it. much. It's yes. their perfect marriage. This is, this is inspired by what we think of you both in marriage. Wow. And we're asking <coughs> the question this morning, is there a perfect marriage? Anika, I'll start with you. So um, what, what I think, when I think of perfection, what I think about is a good balance mm. of negative and positive that is being harnessed well to achieve a, a, a common goal. Mm. So with that definition, there can be a perfect marriage. Okay. That is not to say that that marriage is devoid of misunderstandings mm. or hitches. But then when there are hiccups, mm -hmm. your ability to be able to um, jump the hurdle to find the equilibrium mm -hmm. is what makes it perfect. Mm. I see. Then the question comes, where do you find this person to make up this perfect marriage, Ochami? I, I think that um, as children, <coughs> the children are born pure. Mm -hmm. That one I know. But through parenting, mm -hmm. we break these children. All of us are broken through conversations hard, mm -hmm. through the, the crack of the whip, mm -hmm. through scolding, through telling competition. Mm -hmm. You win, you are smart. You, you, you are last, right. you are dumb. Right. Through these things, by the time a person is old enough to find love, that person is already broken psychologically. So to answer the question, where do you find, mm -hmm. where do you find someone to establish this perfect marriage? That's right. You yourself must begin by fixing yourself mm. to become love. Once you have become love, everything about you blossoms. Mm. So unless you become love yourself, okay. and where love means giving, where love means f making a promise to yourself mm -hmm. that you are going to help your partner or someone mm. or something blossom no matter what. Okay. Once you get to that point where you can give of yourself freely and expect nothing back, mm. you are at the point <laughs> where you are loved. And at this period, you will be loved. Mm. So you find love Mm. by becoming love yourself. I see. Yes. That's the trick to falling in love. Yes. Now I fall in love, Anika. I found the person. I am 60% sure this is the person I want to settle down with. Mm -hmm. How do we go ahead dating with a purpose so that it just doesn't become about the sex or about the going out to eat, send me Momo, <laughs> <laughs> call me, take me, show me to your friends and let me go and meet your mother and father. But how do you date with a purpose? So when you first meet someone, there's something we treat in the book called the relationship spectrum. Mm. You start from liking the person. Okay. Then you go to dating. Now, what we must understand is that when you are dating, you are not in a relationship. Mm. You are just hanging out. That's okay. what dating means. Okay. And so you are free to date <coughs> other people. That is to say that you are free to hang out with others. Mm -hmm. Then you come to dating exclusively. Mm -hmm. Then you come to, you are in a relationship. But at any of these stages, you must agree that this is where you are. Mm -hmm. Then you go to courtship. Then you go to engagement. Mm -hmm. Then you go to marriage. Right. So when you are at these stages, mm -hmm. you have to now find out that, is this the one? So we treat crucial conversations in the book, where at every point in this stage, you have discussions with each other very candid discussions, honest discussions, mm -hmm. where you tell each other the truth. You right. ask so <clears throat> many questions. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about um, sex mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. marriage? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on fidelity? Right. Are you polygamous or monogamous? Okay. Are you, what work do you do? How do you see third parties in our relationship? Okay. When you have all these discussions, then you can actually proceed to say that now this person is mm -hmm. someone that I am aligned with. Do people ask these questions? I hear people, I mean, in Lord Kenya's song, uh, is your father there? Is your mother there? <laughs> What's the name of your dog? Yeah. Um, where do you live? What's your favorite color? Your yes. favorite food? 
What do you do during your spare time? Those are the questions that people will usually yes, ask. People but are, you are taking it to the next level. Yes. Why are you doing that? So people are afraid to ask these pertinent questions mm. because they think if I ask, I may offend them. For example, what work do you do? How much do you earn? Right. This is very key. But we all shy away from it. And then are you monogamous or polygamous? Mm -hmm. We all shy away from it thinking, <laughs> if I ask the person, my partner may leave. But then if you do not ask now, mm -hmm. it's going to rear its head later. Right. So you are supposed to have these difficult conversations so mm -hmm. that you are able to decide whether mm -hmm. this is what you want or not. Okay. When that happens, you save yourself a lifetime of misery. Mm -hmm. I see. I, I see. In a, okay, Chairman. Okay. What, what I also <coughs> wanted to add was that for me, <coughs> hate is not the opposite of love. It Why? is fear. Okay, fear is it? Yes, okay. fear is the opposite of love. And like I already said, that we are all broken from, or most of us infancy. are broken from and infancy. So from by the time that you find love, mm -hmm. you are already afraid. Mm. Yeah, because maybe two girls have already broken your heart or two men have already lied to you. Mm. It is important for you to take this fear turn it into doubts, and turn all these doubts into questions. Mm. So if you are 100% sure that the person that you are dealing with is honest, mm. then you ask these questions and you get your honest answers. Then you decide to keep going mm. or to stop. I see. Yes. So I see that you wanted to put some sample questions out there uh, regarding the pre settlement questions mm -hmm. yes. that you should ask. Yeah. You have told me about how much you earn, where you work, what you do, mm -hmm. your choice, whether you're polygamous or monogamous. What, mm -hmm. what else is there to, to, to ask, really? There's also, um, uh, you do the SWOT analysis. Okay. And then you ask, what are your strengths? Okay. What are your weaknesses? Okay. What are the opportunities that this our relationship has? Okay. And what are the threats? What are the potential things that can break this relationship? Mm -hmm. When you have these discussions, you treat the, the relationship like a business. Okay. Not as transactional, <laughs> but so that you keep nurturing it and growing it to reap the benefits okay. that you both have inside. Uh, let's bring it home. Ochambe yeah. Kwame is a superstar. Everybody like him. Uh, you follow him sometimes to the show. You see how <laughs> the girls are all around him and clinging. That's a strength for him. Um, opportunity is that where well, a lot more brands will like him <laughs> to become his business you know, face. That's an opportunity for you. Right. But again, you're looking at the weaknesses and the threats that come along. Too many girls around him. Would he be stable? Would he not be stable? Would he have fidelity? Would he not? What was your kind of SWOT analysis you did on a Chame Kwame before you said, I do? So we had so many conversations before we said, I do. Mm. What are his thoughts on monogamy or polygamy? He okay. shared them with me, mm. what he wants to be. And when we were even rebranding him as a person, mm. when I asked him, who really are you? What do you want to put out? He said, I'm a family man. And I am a monogamous family man. Right. That's who I want to be. Right. And so when we had those things, and then also to go on to say, I am his brand manager. Mm -hmm. So it is even a downside for me if I do not have a lot of fans admiring him as right. a person. Right. So that is also part of my job to get a lot of people to mm -hmm. like him. Mm. So we had all those discussions and mm -hmm. based on that, we set out to move. Mm. And then also based on little, little acts of things that we did, when he says I'm at point X, okay. he is at point X over a period of time that accumulates mm. to build trust or otherwise. Right. And then now you don't have to even doubt what he's saying because mm. constantly it's he keeps... That his trust yes, that's it. I see. He's blushing. <laughs> he's, t he's turning purple. Ocham is turning purple. Ocham is so... Down. Sometimes question comes, why marry? Why must I marry? Because I've been through 15 relationships, it didn't end well. I'm beginning to think, that's for me, dear. Marriage is not for me. <laughs> Why must I marry? I think that the whole institution of marriage came about because the society decided to regulate um, parenting, mm -hmm. decided to regulate romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, so because of this very regulation, Mm. There are different, different, different types of marriage. There's okay. the Mohammedan one, the traditional one, the ordinance, mm. you know. Everybody can choose one that fits. Mm -hmm. If you really feel in your heart of hearts that you shouldn't get married, not because you mm. are afraid, 
-hmm. But because you know you don't have the aptitude for it, I think you must be left alone. No mm -hmm. one should give you pressure. But if you are planning to have children, if you are planning to bring life into this world, mm -hmm. I think that it is imperative that we know that when children are growing up in a balanced home, I put this with mm -hmm. all respect, mm -hmm. those children have more confidence right. when that, a child knows that my father will come. Mm. If you do this, I'll tell my father, right. you know, mm. and then my mother will give me food. My mother is at home to nurture me. My mother does it. When a child is growing up in that type of mm. setting, so the whole idea of why marry is that if you plan to bring forth more children into this earth, mm -hmm. you need to do it in a way that mm. is wholesome for the children to be able to be nurtured properly. Mm. And under these circumstances, I think marriage it's the right thing to do. But apart from that, mm -hmm. from my experience, mm. marriage is a whole hearty meal. <laughs> it is a beautiful thing. Beautiful. It is, yes, it's a beautiful thing. It's an opportunity for you to have a friend, mm. not to complete you, okay. but a friend that complements your right. efforts. Yes. And so when I go out and I come home and I'm tired and I have Annika telling me, oh, forget it, this thing, two weeks later, no one will care about it. Mm. And I'm, I'm going through stress. Okay. And I have a friend mm. who is helping me work it. It is a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will not give this up mm. for anything. I think that if you have good intentions and you are honest and you really, really, really are willing to give off yourself from without expecting anything back, mm. Mm. you can be married and have an amazing time. Marry for two reasons. One, because the best opportunity for raising children. Okay. And it's great to have the opposite sex as your friend. Companion, some yes. kind of thing. Okay, so now you're married. And the question is this. People spend a fortune trying to get married. How much did it cost you to get married? Um, aside the rings that we bought, it cost us 300 CDs. But this was 12 years ago. 300 CDs? Yes. yes. Why? Why was it? Why Did your father reduce the, <laughs> the items on the uh, list? What it was was that both of us didn't want... Uh, well, I okay. didn't want a very elaborate activity okay so what i what, what i believe and kwame does too is that the marriage is not the ceremony mm. it is the activities after the ceremony okay what happens between the two of you mm. so all we needed were witnesses okay that's all. okay so, oh, so that's so that you was did our the mindset. ordinance thing so we just, at, at the at the office legally yes, yes we went to ama okay. seven of us kma kma, KMA. seven of us oh. we signed and then we were done. And I remember that that cost us 150 cities at that time. Wow. And then my doctors and my friends, um, Dr. Uh, Apia mm. and Mr. Mensa and a few friends, we went to a doom in Kumasi to go and eat fufu. Okay. Done. Marriage was done. Finish. That done. does not mean mm. that if you have money to splurge on pomp and splendor, right. that's not right. I'm coming to the next point. Right. So now you're married. Yes. yes. How do you start out? Because people actually go take loans to get married, <coughs> and then they start running around. <laughs> so this is also a discussion that you have to have pre-married. Okay. For example, when people are not very open about their finances, mm -hmm. one partner may think that the other has, mm -hmm. so they, may, they must just pledge on their marriage. Okay. And if you don't put a cock on it, mm -hmm. then the person doesn't know. They think, oh, he's a man, he must be able to spend. Or oh, she's mm -hmm. from a rich family, mm -hmm. so they must be able to spend. But then when you have the discussion, it comes out, Kwame and I had that discussion, that what type of marriage do you want? Okay. He wanted a very fun wedding. Sure. I wanted very quiet. Right. So we came to the middle. Mm. We also didn't want to start out with using loans for marriage. Mm. If I will use loan for anything, it has to be something right. profitable. profitable. Mm. Yes. Now when people come and eat their chips and drink mm. and they mm. go, they are going with spasms of my money in their eyes, and right. that's not what we wanted. Right. So it's really an individual decision. That's as true. much as we can say that this is not the best use of money you mm -hmm. can get for a, a loan, it is also an individual decision, if that's what okay. makes you happy. Okay. Uh, I, you I, think, I think that um, also for the cases of marriage, mm -hmm. um, their ceremony, sometimes the expectations of family members play a role. Right. So mother is saying that my daughter is going to do a white wedding mm. and we're going to have 15,000 roses of uh, rose petals mm -hmm. and the husband is going to come from an aircraft. Mm. So the mother has been thinking like this for mm -hmm. like the past 30 years. Mm -hmm. And now her daughter is a lawyer mm -hmm. and she's about to get married. 
to a musician. Right. And so they expect these things. So once both of you know, you've had the honest conversation mm -hmm. that, okay, we cannot afford this type of marriage. Right. Then the woman must go back to her parents to say, this is not the type of marriage that I'm getting. Mm. And if the parents still insist <laughs> that if you are not going to throw 500,000 cities on one day mm. on champagne mm. and chips and Coca-Cola, mm. we, we don't support this marriage, then you, it is obvious that you see that these people are trying to break you mm. or they are standing between you and your true happiness. Okay, let's pause for a musical break. There's love locked down, how to maintain a lasting love and relationship. We'll get into that shortly. And also how to marry and stay in the marriage. But first, take a listen to the song that the Shami Kwame once sang. <laughs> So I fade, I fade in a bio. And we are keke nebo. Now we're chini pechin ye. What in the da 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 sara wa da da mi yo. Eighty sweetie sweetie tea, la me sweetie. What in the baby baby sara wa fa mi amo frebi. Send me tea honey ya, me ni mi se wo wa se. You said that you would cross the sea with me, but even through my tears, you drowned. And you said that you would bring the sun to me, but now there's heat between the two of us. You melt down to the And yes, it's a very lovely one. I hope you're taking tips and, and picking up all the notes. I have a super couple in the studio right now. Chami Kwame, Mr. Versatile, the man who does some of everything. He dances, he sings, he raps. He's a father, he's a uh, brand blessing. He's, he's everything you can find. And his manager is here as well, uh, Commander-in-Chief. For those of us who grew up in the barracks, if your father, for example, is a colonel, automatically your mother is a brigadier general. Because when your mother backs, your father is... <laughs> 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 Chami Kwame and Anika in studio. Yes, yes, yes. Let's talk about conflict management. How to get married and stay in the marriage. Anika, where, who, who has the power, the key, to ensure that there's peace always at home? Well, in our home, uh, there's the saying that may the best logic win. Okay. And Kwame and I, we are totally different. Mm. We are everything that shouldn't make a marriage work because our personalities are not the same. Our love language is not the same. Mm. And then our leadership styles are also not the same. Mm. Because of that, we had discussions and discuss, and this, this did not come easily. We had to discuss and discuss to find mm. our balance okay. or our midpoints where at one point we meet each other or one let's go. Okay. So what we do is that when your logic wins, mm. your logic has won. Okay. There's no kicking and screaming. Right. It is not emotion. Mm. It is logic. It is logic. Yes. Chami Kwame, what do you add? So uh, Anika is looking for something, you don't have it. Uh, Santi needs some more investment in her hair business. Like she comes to you, Daddy, I need uh, X amount to reinvest in my business to see I don't have it. What do you do? I, I tell the truth. I don't have it. So then we go to the next question of how do we make it? So, okay. okay, give me one month, mm. give me two months, mm. let me work at it. Because honestly, all my financial streams, uh, uh, Annika is not, it's not oblivious to Annika. We okay. both know how much I make right. and where it comes from. Mm. So when we need more money, we either increase you know, the number of things that we do that gives us money. Okay. Or we try to better one of them, okay. which is not making <clears throat> as much. Mm. You know, so I think that everything in a relationship, mm -hmm. everything can be dealt with. You know, okay. they say that everything can be said. Right. Maturity is how. Mm -hmm. And I think when you are honest, mm. 
and you approach things from a very um, human perspective, uh, the people that you are with mm. sort of understand where you are coming from and they can work with you. I see. Yes. Mm. There's something you wanted to share with us. Yeah, so I wanted to say that So in this book, we, mm. we spoke about uh, managing conflict mm. and we spoke about the uh, Thomas Kilman model where we use avoidance, mm -hmm. accommodation, compromise, collaboration, and competition. Mm -hmm. But what we make sure that we never do is to compete amongst ourselves. How is that possible? How don't we compete? We, we, we don't compete because we know where our values are. OK, because we, you did the SWOT analysis. Earlier. Exactly. Okay. And then we have also, I know that the most important thing for Annika is loyalty. OK. The most important thing for me is honesty. OK. And so. What everything that we are doing is guided by these two. Okay. And if Annika wins, I win. Mm. And I have made a promise to Annika that no matter what happens, I'm going to be with her forever. I'm going right. to love her forever. Right. So if this is the idea, mm. why do we compete? Because when she gets, mm. I get. Times when change. Get, yes. Times change. People change. Yes. Like you sang in your song. People change, especially for women. When I married Annika 12 years ago, she wasn't this woman. Mm. Now she's something else. In the next three years or five years, she'll be hitting her menopause. She could become a little more problematic. You didn't have to pay for this things like that. The, the, it's actually a fun time. Yeah, you know, the, the truth is that mm. people are not static. Because we are evolving beings, right. you need to find a way to re-fall in love with any type of a woman that your wife is becoming. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly falling in love and re-falling in love with Annika. Okay. So no matter what she's doing, my philosophy in the marriage is that do not try to fix your partner. Mm. You fix yourself. Okay. Annika, can we say that because both of you are stylish, it works? Because you have a lot of marriage counselors talk about the fact that, oh, when I married her, she used to spice up and spruce up. Now she's just using one cover cloth and she's walking <laughs> around the house uh, you know, unnerved and, and, and laid back and there's no spice there. I say it plays an important role. Okay. But then again, um, you know, it's like climbing a hill. Mm. When one is down, one pulls the other up. So to, be, to use your stylish example, mm -hmm. we keep edging it. I found this. This mm -hmm. is so cool. I think it will look good on you. Mm. He also brings stuff and says, this will look great on you. Try this. Mm. So it is a collaborative effort. So when your partner is not as stylish as you would like them to be, mm -hmm. and they are susceptible to accept what you want to bring, right. you can share your ideas with them. Okay. You can discuss. Mm. You can find a way where the person can meet you halfway. Mm or they can meet you in a way that will be great for both of you. Let me say something. Say it. To say that I love someone, I love you, mm -hmm. it's not just something that is physical. It's <laughs> not you are, you are fat, you are slim. Mm -hmm. No. There are four main levels to it. Which are? There's the physical level, mm -hmm. the emotional level, right. the psychological level, mm -hmm. and the spiritual level. That's right. You know, so if you love your wife, mm -hmm. and she gave birth to three children, and she has become big, and so what? In spite of, not because of. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, so you are, mm -hmm. because once you open your mouth to say you love someone, mm -hmm. you have transcended all these levels. You are that spiritual space okay. where you give, 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 give attention, okay. give energy, Let, give okay. resources. You Let, know. Let's go back a bit to the dating relationship era because I want us to talk about sex. Yes. And sexual rejection. I've seen a chapter <laughs> in the book. I, I've, <laughs> I read it yesterday. I said, wow, okay. So, People tend to have sex while they are dating or courting, whichever one. How important is that? Should it happen? Should it not happen? And what impact does it have on the real marriage? So <clears throat> this is a discussion we had way earlier on, mm -hmm. Kwame and I, because we have divergent views on that particular subject. Okay. He's of the view that sex before marriage is great. Okay. That is only if you know that this is the one. Okay. After you've transcended through a certain phase right, and certain then you stage, know. Right. And that is because he gives an example that if I'm buying a Ferrari, you need I should test, test drive. drive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we are Ferraris or things, but then that's his. The last time we, te we went on a test drive with an ambulance, it went parking cement. <laughs> <laughs> And then I am also of the view that mm. sex before marriage, it's, it clouds a lot of things. Okay. Clouds your judgment. When emotions are entangled, it's mm. difficult to make the right decision. Mm. 
But then somewhere in between, we find the equilibrium. Okay. My favorite word is equilibrium, equilibrium. or balance. Okay. Because that's is because we are not the same person mm. throughout the world, even with your siblings, there's there are differences. There's always that convergent point where you come and say, We have agreed, let's okay. shake on it. Okay. So that's the discussion that comes. Okay. Once you have both discussed mm. how do we deal with sex before <clears throat> marriage? then you can decide on what to do. You can get a sweet talker, a Casanova, certified one, mm -hmm. ISO certified Casanova, <laughs> who can tell you all the nice things just to get in between the sheets with you yes. and make you believe that he is the one. Yes. How do you react or what, what, how should you bounce back after you've seen that you've been played just so that somebody could have a cookie? So, so uh, okay, so someone has come to lie to you that I love you. Mm only because he was in more interested in sleeping with you, or right. she was interested in sleeping That's with you. Right. And because of that, you have invested your emotions, mm -hmm. and then that person has separated himself and caused a certain detachment mm -hmm. that, has give, that has given you anxiety mm -hmm. and, and, and broken hearts. And broken hearts. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Tell me. I think that it is important for us to know that when a person with bad intentions lives your life, that mm -hmm. person has done you a great favor. Okay. It is key because we meet a lot mm. of people. Few of them become our friends. Some of them, we leave them behind. Mm. And we, are, we must be happy that this guy came to tell me that he loves me. He didn't. He mm. only came to sleep with me four times. Right. But thank mm. God, he's gone. Mm. And so you learn from what has happened, and then you make sure that the next time you go into the next relationship, you are not going to spread your legs. Mm. You know, you are going to make sure that you are at that spiritual level before. Are you not going to be punishing your next lover with the sins of your previous lover if you take that decision? So yeah. it is always mm. a lesson. Whatever we go through, whether they are pleasant experiences mm -hmm. or unpleasant ones, mm. they are always experiences you are amassing over the years. Okay. So what happens is that you, based on your experiences, must have discussions and decisions. Mm. These decisions are yours mm. and yours only. Like mm. Kwame said, you have to fix yourself. Okay. And then based on what you fixed, you can transcend that love onto someone else. Mm. You don't wait for someone to love you. Mm. You have to love yourself. Then it transfers, then you find the major. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm. So before we even go, it is important for us to know that our partners do not complete us. Mm. They are not our better halves. If you are a human being mm -hmm. and you have you are fixed yourself, you get to a point where you do not need someone to make love to you before you can have an orgasm, right. before you can have happiness, before mm. you can have bliss. Mm. You must be able to redeem yourself, mm. turn on the happiness within yourself to a point that you do not need the next person, the next husband or the next mm. wife mm. to be happy. And at that point, when a person comes into your life, that person cannot use words mm. to sway you to do things you do not want to do. Because once you love yourself, mm. you have self-control. Okay, I woke up at dawn to see my beautiful wife up as well. I stared at her as a soft light piercing through the window hit her skin, revealing the contours of her naked body. As my mind and body got stimulated, I thought to myself, oh my God, my wife is beautiful. My ego reminded me that what I had started could lead to disappointment, but I dismissed my ego's caution and proceeded with great expectations. I gently approached my wife from behind, softly kissed her on the neck and whispered into her ears, you are the sexiest woman on earth. Startled, she quickly wiggled herself out of my gentle embrace and dismissively with a harsh tone said, not now, not now. You know I have a presentation in a few hours. She looked away, carried on like nothing major had just happened. How do you deal with sexual rejection in marriage? Please. <laughs> I'm the one who's getting rejected. Ah, okay. I think I think that I think that sexual rejection, like all types of other emotional rejection, mm. physical rejection, it, it is a very, very important thing. Mm. And then we need to talk about it. That's the first one. Okay. The second one is that for for a, a person must get to a point where he has built so much resilience. Mm. That even if the wife says, I do not want to sleep with you tonight, he is not offended. I used to be offended. Right. I used to be like, beat myself yeah. in the dark. I'm trying to get angry. Mm. And because the lights are off, she doesn't even see I'm angry. <laughs> She's asleep snoring, you know. Yeah. But then this told me that there's a big difference between joy mm. 
and pleasure. Okay. Joy is from within. Mm. Pleasure is usually from external, from, external, right. from an external stimuli. Right. So what I want to do with my wife usually is I want her to give me pleasure. Mm. So if she says no, I'm not in the mood, it shouldn't affect my mood. Okay. You know, so that is one thing. So once you get to a point where you understand that you are a whole human being okay. and your wife is totally separate from mm. you, you will be able to deal with the things that she's doing to you okay. that you do not find exciting. Okay. The I second see. one is that you must build yourself, if, especially sexual rejection, mm -hmm. most of the time, men are wired, we see something, now boom, boom. it's up. Yeah. We want to go and do That's it. That's true. But for a woman, if you are trying to get a woman to be in the mood to hold you and touch you mm. and romance mm. you, you need to start in the morning from test messages, okay. kissing on the neck, mm. and you know, calling to church, sending flowers to her office, the whole nine years. So mm. by the time she comes home, mm. her, she's wired to want to get into the groove with you. Right. So we need to understand that women especially mm. are slightly different from, different from, from, from mm. men. But if you want to stay exciting, you need to work out, you need to be happy by mm. yourself, mm. and mm. you need to be honest to Honest. Them. Yes. Anika, we will get a phone in segment with Bella, you know, shortly after the break because we've decided to extend this conversation because of the many messages that you are sending. Bella is in. Uh, she's already checking what's happening there. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. I'm learning a thing or two for Bay. Oh, you look great as well. <laughs> Marriage is a good thing. You are yeah. super Because hard. of you, I'm getting married today. Uh, <laughs> I'll add you down now, please. Come. Anika, my, my final question to you. I need to run to radio to yes. talk about something that's happening in Ketu. Yourself. Right. How do you leave a legacy that lives beyond you, affects your children, spares them on, and for many generations after you are gone, to come and tap into that knowledge and experience? First of all, you have to select what legacy you want to leave. Okay. My legacy that I want to leave is to make sure that my children and my husband have achieved what they want to achieve. Mm. So based on that legacy that I want to leave, I need to research, mm. know them, constantly work at it, and make sure that that legacy is left. Mm. That is what I want that is to leave. What you yes. Okay. Jamie, for me, legacy. For me, I think that if it's about legacy, it's about honesty. Mm. What do you feel inside? Because all of us are unique. Okay. And once you realize your uniqueness and you are honest about your expression, mm -hmm. everything that you live mm -hmm. will be amazing for most of the people. Okay. So once you have done that, especially for children, mm. if we teach children to be honest, mm -hmm. if we teach children to tell the truth, you don't even have to leave them a house or a big business. Right. Once you teach them to be honest mm. and you give them the opportunity to express themselves without inhibitions, that will be your legacy. See, well, the course of true love never did run smooth. That's what William Shakespeare once said. And we'll continue this conversation. Ms. Mundi is standing by. But uh, I would say happy birthday one more time to Nanaya Osei Dako of the Green Republic. It's your birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday. And this is a special one from a group CEO, um, Madame Beatrice uh, Ajiman, and also to you, Harriet Theresa Hughes, a.k.a. Kriya Gaga, my big sister. It's your birthday. She's gone past 50, but she looks 13. Uh, yeah, and then also, and Ms. Uh, Kofi Edu Amoa, you are being installed as the Tufohene to the Asanahene of Latte Kyapim. Congratulations to you, Oga, as you are known by your friends and family. Also, happy birthday to Clothing De Conchi. And also, a happy birthday to Obed Yankee. You are a teacher at the Takrad International School. Aziz Donla, it's your birthday today. Belated happy 40th birthday to Mrs. Gloria Ikria Van Dyke of Tema. This is from Mr. Francis Doku and all your friends. And also, uh, a happy birthday to Esther Efia Ejikum Reku of Ashomang, Bank of Ghana Estate. Happy birthday to you. This is from Emmanuel Ni Afra uh, Kwakupon. Uh, okay, Saki. Uh, happy birthday to you as well. Bella, welcome. I've, 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 I've just been reading Love Locked Down, Maintaining a Lasting Love Relationship by Chami Kwame. It's a funky book. Yeah. So there are two books in one. Yeah, chapter one here, chapter two here. Okay. It's going to be interesting. But what, are, what are they saying quickly, on social media? Read two are they of the yes, uh, so Simbi says, I think now we depend so much on our own thinking that going with what the Bible, uh, than going with what the Bible says concerning marriage. And Dominic Obin says, well, it's I, always I, a hold, good hold idea. Hold a thought there. So okay. th what the Bible says, and nearly talking about a helpmate, for example, mm -hmm. in the Bible, is exactly what they have explained, yeah. that you are complimenting. Mm -hmm. 
So sometimes I, I, I get it a bit twisted when people want to quote the Bible verbatim mm. and not apply to present circumstances such as they find it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's essential that you apply knowledge and wisdom as you find it yeah. and not be stuck in the days of Moses. Huh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Dominic Obey says, it's always a good idea to negotiate your interests and aspirations together and to motivate and inspire one another to succeed. However, there are also situations where it becomes clear that your ideas and perspectives are not just compatible. A sincere conversation must be had. Facts. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, I, I think we'll take just a quick break. Uh, we'll come back and open the phone lines so yeah. we can have people uh, speak directly so with you. When we come back from the break, Bella will be in this chair. I'll be on radio on 3FM 92.7. We're talking about the tidal waves that's dreadful to the people of Agaveji, Salakope, Amuchinu, Adina, and Blekusu in the Volta region, Ketu South specifically. We understand that per our campaign here, NADMO is deciding to go out there to give them some reliefs. After one week since they were hit, more than 20 homes have been eaten away by the sea, and there's fear that a lot more people will be displaced. Presently, some have gone to churches and mosques and schools. Some have gone to Agbozume. But we'll talk about that while we also talk about love here. Love locked down. We're locking it down here right now. We'll see you after the break.